And we're back. What's up, guys? Uh, Mike Frank with Berkshire Hathaway, Frank Oliver and Company, here again. So excited to be coming to you from the office. Uh, it makes me really happy to get back to a sense of normalcy. And just when we were trying to get back to normalcy, we had our social distanced summer cookout planned for last weekend, and we canceled it in the event of rain, and then it didn't rain. So way to go us, right? So uh, we postponed the summer cookout for two weeks. So the 12th of September, come on out, three to five. We're gonna be outside, uh, we are grilling. We have a couple little things for you guys. If you wanna attend, shoot us a quick text or an email. Love to see you guys there. Also, uh, a little bit of rain never hurt anybody. A lot of showings this weekend, a couple offers went out. I know that um, all the agents were really busy and we've had a lot of productivity coming from this activity. So uh, very excited for all the clients that we're working with. We had a couple settlements today. We have one this morning, one this afternoon. We have a couple more this week. It's weird to have a end of month settlement on a Monday, but keeps our costs low. So I'm really happy for the buyers that are settling today and uh, moving into their new home. Um, also, mortgage rate is dropped to 2.91%. That's the 30 year over. Um, that's the Fed rate. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the interest rate that you're going to get. Right now, a great interest rate is floating in the low to mid twos, right? So we have people that are locking in at two and a half percent, which is really amazing. And people that are also similarly getting locked in at three and a quarter, it just depends on your circumstances. Sometimes people want to put down less money and then they get a higher interest rate. Sometimes people want to put down more money and get a lower interest rate, or maybe they want to buy down their mortgage rate. So there's just a lot of things going on right now, but it is always a great indicator that the Fed rate for the 30 year is down under 3%, which is really tremendously valuable for the people that we're working with. It's going to allow you to buy a little bit more of a home, a little bit more space and spend a little bit more money to compete with the other borrowers that are in the market. So, Really excited about that. And speaking of competition, we want to talk a little bit about what should you ask before you choose to hire your agent, right? So whether you're buying or selling, you want to represent the best that you can, and you obviously want to have a great agent. So a couple questions that we have here, very basic stuff, but things that you guys can ask and things that you guys can remember when you're looking to interview the agent for the job to represent you. First question, super simple, is real estate your full-time job? I would always answer with yes, because real estate is my primary focus. If I have a second job or I have a family member or I coach something on the side because that's my passion, real estate is still my full-time job, right? If you're hiring somebody and real estate's not their full-time job, they work for the government, they shoot photography, they run a business, great. I would wonder what is the value of that agent for you? And, and again, many people are trying to get into real estate. They're growing their business. They have a family to support. And so they need something else to support their financial freedom. But if real estate's not their full-time job, I wonder what is their energy going to go towards when you're looking to get into your home of your dreams. So that's a big one. For somebody that says no, that's a big red flag. It's not always about the question. Sometimes it's about the answer. The way that we display our activities is going to be the way that we work for you. What makes us different from other agents? So I'm not gonna give out all the secrets, but obviously you wanna have somebody that says, this is what makes me different, that's what makes me different, and this is my value for you, right? How can we present more value than another agent would in the marketplace? And again, most agents are gonna say the same thing. Well, we're gonna work with you, we're gonna show you houses, we're gonna make you feel comfortable, or we're gonna list your home, we're gonna take great photography, we're gonna have videography, and so on and so forth. But what makes us different, or what makes us stand out? And again, it's not necessarily about the question, but also about the answer. The way in which we answer makes a big value proposition for your negotiation. How many clients have you dealt with? That's a big one. And when I was newer in the business, it was a difficult question to answer. Now, again, it's gonna demonstrate your experience, but just because you haven't sold 150 houses this year doesn't mean that agent's not the right one to, to fit you. Nationally, the average agent sells seven houses a year. So for somebody that's been in the business for five or six years, for them to only have sold 30 or 35 houses is not foreign and it's not far-fetched. They're gonna have a great bucket of experience, but they may respond by saying something like this. Well, I've represented 35 other sellers or I've represented 35 other buyers. And that's a great answer because they've done nationally the average. But if they said something like this, 
In the last six months, I've represented six people, which is tremendous for me because last year I was able to exceed the national average by selling eight houses. And this year, my business is growing. I'm taking my skills to the next level in order to represent clients that I'm working with. That would be a way better answer. It would instill a lot more trust in me for the clients that I'm working with, but also for the people that I'm looking to represent. I want to have that relationship with them. Just because I say I've sold 65 houses this year does not give me the experience to qualify me to be the representative that you choose to work with. It goes on to other questions like, are you going to be present throughout the process? Are you going to show the homes? Are you going to work with me through the home inspection and the negotiation? I don't just want somebody that sells a ton of homes. I want somebody that's going to answer the questions that I have, right? Where can I find your reviews? That's a great question there. Where can you find somebody else's feedback, positive and negative, on the experience they had in working with you? Now, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of vulnerability. The worst review that I have, to my knowledge, on my Zillow website is from my best friend's wife. It was critical and it was crushing. She was very mean. She gave me a 4.9 and I was like, what the heck? But it was real. What she said was that my negotiation skills were not yet on point. It was the first house I had ever sold. And so it was very real. It gave me a place for me to work and grow my skills. Now, you guys can go on to Zillow. You can go on to Redfin. You can go on to Trulia. You can go on to Realtor.com. You probably can go on to my Berkshire Hathaway website and find reviews of the experience that clients have had working with me. And that's where you're going to find a lot of value in picking the right agent. You want someone that has other client experiences that they can share the good and the bad in what the experience was like working with me so you guys can hire the right agent to represent you. Next question. Will you negotiate on our behalf? This is an easy, easy one to answer. Does the agent care more about profit and putting money into their pocket or finding you the right home. The right home might be the perfect house, it might be the perfect size or the perfect shape or in the perfect neighborhood, or it could be just simply protecting your investment and encouraging you not to overpay when you're purchasing a home because that overpayment is actually spending your money. So sometimes we find ourselves telling our clients, I can't give you advice to overpay on the value because you're gonna come back to us and want us to sell your home. That's an incredibly valuable proposition versus absolutely we could go $10,000 higher because that's going to put money into our bottom line and the profit that we can create as a business. You have to choose which agent is right for you. The one that's going to negotiate for you or the one that's going to roll over and die to make the transaction work. So when we're working with sellers, they often ask, how can we save money? Or an agent over here is going to offer us X commission. Will you match that? And the easy answer is, if I give up my money today, what am I going to do for your money tomorrow? So if we're creating the opportunity to negotiate powerfully for you, are you going to choose the agent that's going to negotiate for you? Or are you going to choose the agent that pads their bottom line? That's a big question that you should be asking yourself when you're buying a home, especially when you don't even know the first thing that's different between agent A and agent B. It's a big question and you want to have somebody that's going to give you an answer that's going to make you feel like they're going to protect that investment. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for weekly content. Also, check out our social media pages. The links are in the description below. See you next week.